Hey guys, so I thought I would do a quick unboxing of the Smiths Meat is Murder. This just came in the mail and I'm super excited about it. I'm on my way to a photo shoot at Cranbrook and I just wanted to pop this in. I've been highly anticipating this CD. I've been searching the stores for it and have come up empty handed. So. This was another Amazon buy. I really try not to do that, but again, these were these same points I was redeeming. So, you know, I can justify it, especially if that CD is at a pretty low consumer cost, which this was. So we've got the Smiths, Meat is Murder. This was their second studio album and really a great hit. I thought The Queen is Dead was their follow-up to their self-titled debut released in 1984 but it's actually this and it makes a lot more sense because the songs the headmaster ritual the joke isn't funny anymore um are more akin to that first album opposed to that third album the queen is dead which is really much more rooted in pop and some dance elements in there but this is more of like a staying true to that indie alternative rock type of sound that's um blending in some almost like some funk in there. Super interesting songs. Rush Home Ruffians has a super unique bounce to it. Um, I Want the One I Can't Have, just a masterful song. These songs that I mentioned are so replayable to me. I think when I was getting back into the Smiths a few years ago, I was driving to take a little vacation and I popped in a, a live Smiths Burn CD from my old mentor. And it really hit home. I couldn't believe. I wanna go home. I don't want to stay. The emotion I was experiencing of just like, wow, these lyrics are truth and this music is just decadent. When you laugh about people, you feel so very lonely, their only desire is to die. And wonderful to hear this amazing juxtaposition of lyrics that may be somewhat drab and depressing but then you blend it with this beautiful melodic almost upbeat guitar and backing music side with Andy Rourke on the bass. Rest in peace from last year. The timing of everything feels very distinct and feels like the universe sort of highlighting certain feelings that I'm having and these connections that I'm making and remaking. I just kind of wanted to flip through this because it's my first time ever seeing this. We have the lyrics. Love that they provide lyrics in these liner notes. That's such a huge draw for me as someone who loves music, someone who plays music, someone who collects CDs now. This is great. This is so great. I love this. I love seeing this stuff for the first time and really just like absorbing the style of it, the, the choices that they're making here. Wonderful. Going back and forth between this this uh, nice gray print with the lines on the side, very symmetrical, very central, very clean, very simple. And then it's met with this um, white texture. It's a little hard to see. Almost highlighting the juxtaposition that I was just talking about. Super nice, super nice release. And yeah, this actually, I didn't know that this was actually from a movie, which makes sense. This still shot right here, all of their albums and posters are from you know stills of movies from the 60s and whatnot. I love it. I love uh, the cleanness of the CD, especially when you compare it to um, their first CD right here. Um, that's a lovely matching. It's not exactly the same, but it's close enough to carry a theme. To me, when you're listening to music you love, you go right to the studio CD before anything else, and you play it in your car. If you don't have a sound system at home or what have you, play it in the car. I mean. You've got the sub, you've got the speakers for it. Most cars are equipped with CD players, I think. I <laughs> don't actually know. 
as far as modern cars go, but yeah, to me, it's just a really clean sound. I love that you can listen to it in the car. You can take it with you. These jewel cases, they're just plastic cases. If this outside plastic gets messed up, you can just get a new case and reinsert the artwork. Not like I really ever do that anyways, but if you wanted to, you could do that. It's just a nine track album, um, but to me, completely worth the 10 or so dollars I spent on it, especially since it was, uh, redeemable Amazon gift points. Huge bonus. It really feels like sort of a delayed Christmas in getting the CD, as silly as it might sound. I mean, when I found Minor Threat at Village Vinyl, I mean, I was just floored. Um, I've got the video for that and everything. I don't know. Something just really excites me about, about the music that I love. I, I'm so utterly specific about which albums I love. So, when I buy one, it's, it comes with much thought, um, and I know I'm gonna listen to it again and again, and it's gonna get its worth and value. Me buying it is going towards supporting that artist. Really, if you can do it on the artist's website, that's, that's all the better. But yes, listening to the CD sound, finally, after doing so many covers, um, that joke isn't funny anymore off of this album. I wish I could The Headmaster Ritual. <laughs> Listening to it on Spotify so many times and then playing it so many times. To revisit it months and months later with that raw CD sound is just pure power. It really excites me and inspires me as a musician, as a collector, as an advocate for physical media and indie artists. I really believe in the stuff that I buy, and that's why I buy it. And I, I do these videos not only to share my passion and what I'm doing with my life and such, but also to inspire others to start doing the same. It took a lot of watching videos for me to um, be this confident in just recording myself and then editing it and then releasing it to the world or what have you. I encourage you to do the same, even if it's at a low scale rate. I mean, I've got my phone propped up with a cup of water right now <laughs> on the dash of my car, but I just felt like, you know, this wasn't planned, but I'm glad that I can have the spontaneous energy and focus to pull it off. Don't make excuses. Just, just do the things that you want to do and try to just beeline towards that. After listening to more of the album, I discovered tracks that I had not stopped to appreciate before. And this is such a huge part of buying an album, right? Because you would hear songs that you would just never usually hear. In this case, I'm talking about the song, Well I Wonder. Now, originally this song was released as a B-side to the single, How Soon Is Now. And if you know the Smiths, if you don't know the Smiths, How Soon Is Now is pretty much unarguably their biggest, most popular hit song. So the fact that this certain song popped up on that single as a B-side, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is that the day that I was re discovering this song and really reappreciating it, truly hearing it, the next day I looked back and I saw that Well I Wonder came out that very same day that I reconnected with it. And this is like this sort of divine timing kind of stuff is very cool to me. It really inspires me. Despite this song being a little peculiar and a little difficult, I decided I was going to just learn it anyways. This was sort of like a, a force of nature guiding me at this point. The musical gods were puppeting me. So I, I learned it yesterday, spent a few hours learning the song, I found the BPM, I found a beat that matched close enough. What attracts me to Well I Wonder, of course it's in line with everything that I've already been talking about so far with Meet His Murder and really just music appreciation in general is the juxtaposition of music and lyrics. Well I Wonder is a great example of that. It starts off in this sort of 
dismal um, funk, and then it leads into this more cathartic major chord progression and really breaks off into this lighter pattern. But mindfully, it doesn't like stay in one of those areas for too long. This song specifically, it really knows when to switch its chords and its patterns and progressions. You really just can't predict what's coming in this song, which is what intrigues me about it, but it's, it's it also makes it a little difficult to learn, especially coming into this basically never hearing the entire song before, which is crazy to me. It's insane, right? <laughs> this album that I love so much, and there's still tracks that I'm discovering on it. I think it's so cool that I can do that. I come back to physical media, I come back to thanking the CD makers themselves, Rough Trade Records. The Smiths are just one of those great bands that I'm always going to keep coming back to, and I'll probably always be discovering more of their music because it seems like there really is that much of it. You know, I think they only have like four or five studio albums, and then they have a bunch of compilation albums which includes like new unreleased tracks and stuff. A lot of bootlegs, a lot of alternate versions, a lot of live versions um, when it comes to the Smiths. It's truly shocking to me that I can love a band for 14, 15 years and still just be discovering <laughs> new songs. <laughs> Education is a bad 